Hi friend, so over on the main channel, we recently introduced you to these guys. I'll plug it in. These little awesome button stations from a company called Visual Productions in the Netherlands, okay? Now we can get them here in the US now, which is awesome um, because they're a really unique problem solver that can do some really interesting things, uh, especially in the realm of not only house light control, but multimedia control, meaning that there's video devices, audio devices, as well as lighting things that you can control all in one. And in this video, I wanna go through and really do an in-depth review, an in-depth look at what these are and how you use them. So for example here, hey, let's turn some light on. So you should be able to see, yep, the red light behind me there turned on. Now I'm gonna do a long press and it faded out. At its core, as we mentioned over on the main channel when we introduced this guy, this is basically a house light controller where you're able to press buttons and get things to come up on house lights. But it does so much more than that. And I think that's where you really start to, to understand and see that this is a versatile unit. It's not just a one trick pony. Um, and so the one thing right off the bat, okay, so we compared it in the main channel video to the Springtree SM8s, which we recommend a lot. The SM8s are a simple, simple, simple DMX capture device where you've got eight buttons, you bring DMX through it from your console to your fixtures, and then you go ahead and you fire off uh, with these buttons, or on the SM8, the eight buttons, uh, seven presets and an off typically and you record those from DMX and you're done. Okay, this has its advantages that it's really simple, they're really inexpensive, and they, they tend to work well and they've been really reliable and good for our customers. Um, but the P-Station 2 comes in and, and does some different things that uh, get a little bit more complex than the setup, though as I'll show you today, it's not difficult but unlocks for you the ability to do so much more. Like even just the ability that you know, I've got here two cues where I've got this one that turns red and then I hold it again and it turns off. Well, my off on that same button is actually a second cue, okay? So I can go ahead on this B station and I could have as many cues as I want. I mean, I know there's a limit somewhere, but I could have on a single button, say 10 different looks for the venue, 10 different, you know, brightness levels, let's say, and 10 is just an example that's not a, a actual, like, this is your limit. Um, but you can have, you know, somebody go and click through and say, okay, you know, you can click through all these different scenes in your venue and get them to come up. So the biggest thing that I found out that we've we've seen with these B stations is they're an awesome device. They're easy to mount uh, either straight to the wall or to a low voltage box, and uh, they tend to work really well. But the one thing they don't do, as we mentioned, is that simple DMX capture that uh, that the Spring Tree units do. Okay, that's like the one thing they don't do. And so just to run you through it, if you wanted to do something like that. Um, they have these Q cores and also this uh, QT software that are all standalone little boxes that you can program lights into, capture DMX, do more complex things uh, without having to have your main console on. And I apologize if you hear sawing in the background, there is some of that happening. <laughs> but, um, but all in all, uh, besides the fact that you can't record simple DMX, which is kind of a bummer to me, um, it's just really stinking cool that, you know, you can have all these different looks on here. Um, long press to turn it off. You can customize the LEDs in the background. Um, you see this one here, nice and easy. Uh, you could have a cue and, and just start firing through all these different cues all on one button set. And so that's where this gets really interesting because as you can see, six buttons, but it does a lot more than just six things. And I think that's where it gets powerful. Um, so let's dive into the interface and talk a little bit more about how to do things because uh, ultimately me jabbering on about is one thing, but being able to see it is another. So uh, just as an example, before we open it up, this button and this button are straight DMX, okay? So they're sending out DMX cues inside the console uh, to lights. This button, which I just fired, just fired a cue on my LightShark lighting console via OSC, okay? 
And so this is where this gets interesting because now it's like, okay, so inside this box, inside the B station two, I can store different cues with basic, basic fixtures. Or I can trigger something like Light Shark in many venues that use those. We just leave them on 24 seven. And you could trigger that from these wall panels all day long, okay? Or you could go and you could have different pieces, audio, video, lighting, have them on one button, or um, as visual productions have, they have these touchscreen kiosk modules as well, which allow you to do so much more. Um, so let's dive in here. So looking at the software, first of all, it is all web-based, which is awesome. Let me just refresh it here because I don't turn it off. I think it got lost. Um, so what you'll see is you launch first their you actually launch their V Manager software. I'll pull that over here. It shows you all the devices on your network that are from Visual Productions. Uh, so in this case, I've got three. It allows you to update the firmware, etc. Um, but then simply going to browse will go ahead and open up the web page uh, for that device, as you can see. Um, and in the case of the B stations. The web interface is everything you need, which is cool. Um, and so, and so, what you get basically is uh, for the built-in like DMX programming of different buttons within the B station. Uh, the primary way to do it is by actually patching fixtures. Now, this is kind of an interesting system. Uh, something I haven't quite seen before because you click on personality and you get these different channel options. So colors, intensity, zoom, focus, special, and then parked at full, parked at zero, fine, and then there's the backspace key. And what you do is you basically bring in any combination of these channels. The one caveat, the one limitation it has is it doesn't let you do multiple of the same channel. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. So you're not going to be doing moving heads. You're not going to do moving lights in this software. But anything LED, anything conventional, you can patch them all day long. So you set the personality, you patch different fixtures, and then you go over here to the playback where you have your different fixtures that you've patched. You have a master fader, um, and then you have six playbacks. That's handy, right? Six playbacks, six buttons on the device. This makes a lot of sense. And you simply go in here and you select the fixture. So like I was just trying to understand it messing around. So fixture one here is just my intensity of this fixture here. Hope I may have messed something up along the way. Should have intensity. Oh, fi sorry. F fixture one was color. Fixture two is just my intensity. Now you see it. Um, and then you can do things like, it doesn't have to just be static scenes because there are some basic effects built in. So maybe we go and do a twinkle. Yeah. But like a sine wave. So here it looks like we've got a sine wave on red going. And, you know, it's something, right? It's most house light panels aren't going to have this kind of thing. So you, you can build some basic things there, record it into a playback, clear, and off you go. Life's good, you know. Um, so you build in your, your different cues and your different playbacks, and they don't have to, by default, correspond to the buttons, uh, but they can. So you go to show control here, and, for example, I could load this template. I'm not going to right now. Buttons equals six cues. And in that template... Button one, playback one. Button two, playback two. Button three, playback three, and on and on and on, right? Um, but in this case, I programmed some different things. So basically, each action, you have different, you have sources, you have action lists, uh, which deal with the sources, and then you have actions themselves. So you bring in, for example, playbacks and individual fixtures, um, OSC, UDP, all these different DMX input, Artnet, SAC, and you can send out all these different va values manually um, or, um, or using the, the presets. And then you go ahead and you say, okay, you know, I've got my, my action list of buttons here. I want to add a new button. 
So I added a new action. I press edit. Now, trigger type, uh, button. We're gonna go with button four here, one we haven't used before. Or I can hit, uh, let's say I set that to one, and then I hit learn, and then I hit button four. It picks up on it right away. Um, so you don't even have to know what the numbers of the buttons are, <laughs> but it's not that hard. Um, and then you press add. Now you have all these different tasks, so this is what happens. I typically define an LED task for each button. So you gotta watch out here. Parameter one here, you need to set to the button of that button, so that it should match this number over here, because that's the number of the button for both. Uh, but you may have a situation where you want a button press to do something to all the buttons, to all the LEDs, have at it. Um, and then you set what you want it to do. So I actually like skipping col skipping intensity and just setting colors. We'll pick a nice yellow. And then we will add an action for a playback. And it is now playback 4Q1. And now I can press execute uh, here on the screen. And we see our cue. Or if I go ahead and uh, stop it, we didn't set a stop command though. But I could go into the playback section real quick. And I could release this one. I can now actually press the button and the cue fires. Okay. So that's generally how the B station works. Um, let me just release that again. Um, you generally want to build in uh, either a second queue that stops the the inside the inbuilt playbacks or something that releases them all. Um, but the general gist is it's pretty simple, pretty easy to set up here in show control. Um, make sure to label things well, or else this will become a giant mess. But pretty simple. Where it gets more interesting is when you talk about triggering other devices. Like obviously, you know, in here, sending simple messages, being able to go and say, hey, for button four here, I want it to run that color. And I also want it to send a OSC message to, and then you can set uh, where you're, what you're sending um, and the parameters of that. And then you can send that off in the settings to up to four different IP addresses. Pretty cool. Um, and so what that then allows you to do is, you know, fire off different things on that same button that you're already firing lights, okay? Um, what else? So in the actions as well, just to be aware, it's not just lighting cues and, that, and, and OSC messages, but we can also add, this is cool, the ability to send ArtNet or SACN settings, okay? So this is where uh, you can go ahead and set the input universe that you're listening to uh, for the DMX output on this device. So that's kind of interesting between maybe switching between consoles, something like that. Uh, but you can also send, what I find interesting is if you go to DMX, You're able to clear, you're able to set um, an individual channel, which I like. So you can go, okay, you know, I want to set channel one at full, right? And then when I hit this button for a simple, simple setup, that could work well. Um, and you can see there's there's a lot in here. Um, so you could, you could actually go in here and control a fairly complex rig, but it would take a lot of time. Um, so... All in all, uh, we really like these B stations from Visual Productions. You can see here, for example, there's a monitor page to look at the DMX and the ArtNet and the SACN coming in so you can see what they're all doing. You can see what your, your fixture itself is doing. Um, lots of good stuff here. Um, is this the perfect one-size-fits-all, everybody-needs-this kind of device? No, of course not. Do we ever say things are here? No, we don't. But I think the B station, too, is a really good device uh, to be able to have a variety perhaps of wall stations because you can have them send triggers to each other um, so that you have a second device maybe where you literally go and just have it receive you know osc or udp uh, or tcp would be the best because uh, there's feedback you would have it send tcp messages back and forth 
and uh, different button stations could stay in sync that way, um, with one being the master and the others uh, being secondary. Um, there's a lot of ways you can make this work. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff going on, and I think it's definitely worth a look if you're looking to uh, get a creative house light control, or even better, uh, I think for a lot of venues that are not a typical stage type venue, like for example, we've got some of these going in to a go-kart track uh, pretty soon, a place that's got you know go-kart track and, and mini golf and all that stuff, and they're going to use them to trigger the lights in different parts of their, their space through a light shark. Um, and so there's a lot of great options as to how to make these things work. There's a lot under the hood. Really, when it comes down to it, um, I would say there's just there's a lot of capabilities built into it. You got to watch out because it can't directly record DMX, um, but the Q cores from Visual Productions uh, can. Okay, so that's where um, you know it's a small device. It's basic. It's fairly inexpensive. Um, it can do a lot. There's some things that can't do, but generally, if you're trying to do those types of things, um, they can be done within a larger system. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Visual Productions B Station 2. At the end of the day, we'd love to help you guys figure out how to use these, um, how they work in your context. And if you're in the U.S. and you need a B Station or anything else with lighting, guess what? We are your dealers over at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. We aim to be the most helpful people on the web when it comes to buying stage lighting gear. And we would love to serve you. So if you've got a question about this or anything else, hop over to the site, throw it in your cart, request a quote, or just shoot us an email, gear at learnstagelighting.com, and we would love to help you. Thanks so much, and have a great day. See ya.